All right, welcome everyone. My name is Ryla Stena. It's another Friday. So today we have an episode of the Live Pro Network. So today I'm joined here by Dan, Dan Dusen. So welcome, Dan. Thank you. Excited so, to be here today. Yeah, yeah, great. Great to have you. Before we get into it, I, I want to get into a little bit of housekeeping. Um, let's see. And let me let me show you my my information again here. So the housekeeping that I want to get into is I want everyone to go to the Mont Legal YouTube and subscribe over there. So right now we're live in multiple places. So I don't know where you guys are watching, but in the future, this is going to be just on the Mont Legal YouTube page. So this is something that I've, I've kind of seen in the industry, um, you know, platform choices aside, but it's better to go just to one place. The advantage of going to one single place is that the comments is one of the one of the main things yeah right yeah. so as people participate in the comments we can see them all right here you kind of see our behind the scenes mm -hmm. you know software up here on the screen but if people are commenting in different place they don't get the benefit of, of each other's opinion yeah right yeah, that makes a lot of sense and you know that's what i've seen um um as real valuable like in other i guess youtube things mm -hmm. or live streams that i've watched I've noticed people are going that direction. Yeah, like, I think one even because there's a lot of people that don't watch this live and they can go back later and kind of ask a question even of you and then you can pop in and then other people benefit from that as well, all in one spot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So we so we love questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, ask away. Yeah. So if you guys are watching, you have some questions, we have uh, you know a financial advisor and an attorney. So we can um, uh, answer some, some questions that you guys have. Uh, let, let's put your stuff up, uh, back up here, Dan. So, um, yeah, so I'll, let's get into it. So, sure. so what's our first objective today? We said <laughs> it's fun, right? To have a good time. Yeah, that's, that's always it. Yeah. Um, you know, when I do these shows, the, the goal is uh, really just to get to know different professionals. Sure. And it's me networking live. Yeah. Hence the name, Live <laughs> Pro Network. I'm not that creative. <laughs> I just try to call everything exactly what it is. It takes so, the ambiguity out of it, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And I'm I'm not very good at like meeting people. At, like the attorney things are boring, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so now I I feel like this is a good way to get to know professionals, and it gives you know all my friends and clients the, the benefits. So like we're allowing them to join the conversation. So take advantage of technology. Much more modern uh, uh, way to do it shows kind of how you're on the leading edge of technology and modernization, which I think is important as your industry evolves too, for sure. So yeah, that's great. yeah. yeah. Yeah, so before we get into it, you know, as as we are setting up, we mm -hmm. we've had some, you know, great uh topics yeah, come up yeah. that we're we're kind of saving for for the show before we get into the the real juicy stuff. Um but before we get into it, I I like to start with just like an introduction. So sure. number one, so who is Dan Van Dusen? So um yeah. Um I say yeah, let people know I guess who you are and then what led you to this business. You know, we don't want to <laughs> you know, I was born this day, but yeah, sure, give, give sure. us some background who you are. Absolutely. And then how you got into this business, because that's, that's, you have an interesting backstory. Fantastic. So Dan Van Dusen, and um, I, I founded, founded Objective Wealth in uh, middle of 2019. So the business itself is, is a year and a half old. Um, I'm, uh, and, and what is Objective Wealth? Yeah, a great, great question. So we are a fee-only financial planning firm. And so we really focus on working with clients. Um, I have clients of all ages, and we work on on kind of helping set their goals, working uh, with their so so fee only as yep. opposed to commission. Is that kind of the other yeah. way? Yeah, it's a great yeah. So there's there's so. kind of three ways to think about it. There's there's a fee only. Um, there's kind of a fee based, which is a the middle ground, and then there's kind of that commission commission model that you tend to. Um, just get paid on uh, either either a product sale or something like that. So as a fee only advisor, um, there's a couple of different ways fee only advisors work. They they work on kind of a subscription or a monthly or quarterly kind of flat fee, or they work on what they call um, a percentage of the investments that you're working with. So those are the yeah. two fee only. Yeah, I feel like those are the newer ways. Yeah, the commissions yeah. is kind of like the older way, and um, not yeah, really, yeah. Um, the, the, as effective or it, um... it really tries to uh, remove the conflict of interest. Now there's still always some type of conflicts in, in everything, uh, but it tries to remove as much as possible uh, the conflict. Oftentimes you're also working with clients in a much more 
kind of long-term capacity where you're meeting quarterly or, or semi-annually or something uh, instead of potentially uh, working with them once and then maybe not talking to them again for five or 10 years. Yeah. yeah. After you got the commission, yeah, they figure yeah. out. Yeah. So, so it, there's incentive to, to continue to work with them because otherwise, um, you know, they're not interested anymore. So uh, the, the fees and the, and the costs only come as long as I continue to work with somebody. Yeah. So I guess first, uh, first tell us, you know, how you got into this business yeah. and uh, tell us about your, your former life. Yeah, sure. So um, I, you know, cause, cause before we started, you're like, uh, you know, should I, should, you should I let him know this? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah no, I'm a career changer. Uh, I spent, I spent a, a fair amount of, of my uh, 20 years or so in the, the education and technology space. And, and but always had a passion for finance, so I kind of went through my undergrad. So at, education and technology. Yeah, so delivering education through technology means in, in all different capacities. So through in the in the K twelve realm as well as the higher education space and kind of the professional learning space. So whether cool. it's like so, learning management systems, content delivery, you know, we were on the early stage when kind of internet was new when I started, you know, for for delivering content up right up until um, where some people just do only, ver you know, if you're going to, whether you're going to high school or whether you're going to college, only online. And mm -hmm. it's, it's becoming yeah. more and more common. And, and obviously with today, you know, with COVID yeah. and everything, just think about how everybody has kind of had to switch quick. So Yeah, yeah so they benefited from you kind of pioneering that, that That's industry. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other thing I was thinking is you're perfectly suited for a new world we're going into. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I view myself as that, you, yeah. know, an, yeah. you know, an educator Absolutely. You yeah. know, trying to use technology to, uh, to, to help people. Yeah. I think, I think um, kind of leveraging that when I work with, work with people, it's important for me to educate them. I don't want them to just kind of just trust me. It's important for them to, I think any advisor they work with, whether it's a estate planning attorney, a CPA, a financial advisor, anybody, they should, you know, have some best, vested interest in. And so if I can educate them and and make sure they understand what I'm doing, I think it goes a long way. Yeah. 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 So we, you know, as part of our Mott Legal core values, the middle one is empowerment. Sure. Absolutely. That's you great. Know, so yeah. we, you know, have a strong, you know, you know, belief that we should help people. Okay. And I feel like, you know, I talk about the old school, you know, or the, <laughs> you know, to really appreciate what that is, you have to kind of know, you know, kind of the opposite of that. Yeah. And I think some, I don't know if you've seen this, but it's, it's this way in the legal industry where some of the older people were like, just, just trust me. I'm mm -hmm. smart. You're not just yeah. give me lots of money and <laughs> don't ask too many questions. Right. Right. Yeah. Cause it makes their life ch more challenging. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. No, I'd rather yeah educate. Like you said, empower. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I, I feel like the, the new world, mm -hmm. you know, is, is kind of demanding. And I think know, as you get to different, yeah, the new world, especially with different gener, the newer gener, younger generations, maybe a better way to put it is, is, you know, they, they want to have a much more hands-on and, and thoughtful approach about it. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So that's how I, I guess I've developed my business mm -hmm. in mind, you know, with the millennials, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, trying to think about, okay, what does this new consumer want? Yes. You yeah. Know, what do, and they, um, and you know, some people bash millennials. I'm the generation, depend, I'm born in 81. Okay. I'll All be right. 40 yeah. next yeah. year. Uh, so I'm not quite a, a millennial, depending on how you mix it. Sure. I think it's like a gen, gen Xer. Yeah. But it's like we knew life before the internet. I think you're probably yeah, close I'm, to I'm, my age. I was born in 78, so real close. Yeah. 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 So yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. we remember life before the internet. Yep. Yeah, I feel like that's a real advantage you know, that that our generation has. Yeah. Like that little that little space to see a boat, because you know now kids they don't they don't know what it's like to wait for your favorite show only be on once a week <laughs> or you know just like the, so the many cliffhanger, things right? the cliffhanger you got to wait for a full seven days to the next episode no nowadays you just stream the whole season yeah yeah but it's um yeah you know, i bring that up but really just how people they expect you know things on demand mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so instant gratification yeah yeah and technology now allows for a lot of those things so sure, sure. it's like um I'm up for the challenge, I guess, as as a business owner. That's what I think is exciting about the legal industry. Yeah, because it's um, evolving into you know something different, something better. Well, I think that's one of the things that I've seen in our industry too is some of the tools and technology that we have access to is allowing uh, those types of clients who do need that instant information have access. So we have client portals that they can that people can log into and kind of see a lot of their information in much more real time. It even allows them to, to to kind of play with some variables if they have some questions. So, um, it, you know, if they're up late at night or on the weekend or whatever, <laughs> you know, they like, what is this going to happen? And yeah, so it gives them some a, opportunities. But at the end of the day, I'm on the, on, you know, on the back to to really answer the the 
the detailed tough questions whether it comes to tax or legal or anything like that yeah it's good they have that information yeah, yeah. You know, you're like you're, yeah. you're you know, Providing, empowering yeah you're know, mm-hmm. showing everything but at the same time you probably don't you don't want it to be up late at night no no you know, no like, you're right you want the, yeah that's a great you point know, they're, yeah. they're not going to be um uh you you know, some people might it might be too much information for people yeah there's a fine line and and you know our portals allow us and i i think different clients have different types of needs or wants there but you're right you don't want to give them too much yeah here here's here's how i deal with that issue or, or see that issue mm-hmm. with legal clients okay so with um with the legal documents we we prepare mm-hmm. you know we want to show them everything sure and we have um so one of my attorneys you know we're talking about one of his clients who um you know wants to read everything mm-hmm. and w- w- which is good yeah um but he's already you know kind of he's getting in the weeds i would say asking questions about why this paragraph is written this way or something yeah and yeah. things that don't matter yeah yeah so so what i like to do i said you know i want you to show him the documents first yeah, and then leave them with them. Okay. Yeah, so I, I want you to take them through, and this is what I try to do with people, mm-hmm. you know, because I feel like if they're up late at night, I, I've done a disservice. <laughs> sure, that's so, a great point. Yeah. So what I try to do is like, okay, here, here's the major things you need to know. Mm-hmm. You know, here's the moving parts, and then I've, I've, um, uh, uh, organized our documents. I put all the boring stuff at the end. It's, okay. it's important to be yeah. in there, but I, I go through the moving pieces, and then I'm like, yeah, this stuff, you know, I can, you know. It's not law school 101. We're not going to go all the way in there. You know, you know, trust me on, you know, why some of the stuff is in there. Mm-hmm. But here, here's what you need to focus on. Yeah. And here's everything you can read. And yeah, I'll answer every all your questions when you get back. But if you want to know about the rule against perpetuities, um, don't worry. There's a it's... 500 year wait and see rule. So <laughs> like, um, your grandkids, grandkids, or whatever. Um, yeah, you've tried to simplify your documents too. I've seen some of your other live streams where you've talked about that, right? And that probably helps, but you know, the traditional old way of a giant binder that you got to lug around and, and so forth. Now it's, that's, it's much more modernized. Yeah. So I, I take pride in that. Mm-hmm. I think it's a challenge mm-hmm. though. Sure. Sure. Just yeah. Things down. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know where the quote comes from. I should find it. I heard it in a book somewhere, but they said, if I would have had more time, I would have written a shorter letter. Yeah, yeah. You know, because it, it takes more, I feel like, to simplify concepts. It makes it harder. I think in the financial planning industry, too, there there are some some advisors that will come and give you this giant stack. It's of charts and graphs that it looks impressive, you know, when you first get it. But at the end of the day, if you can simplify it down to, okay, you know, what are your goals? Some advisors even kind of go all the way to what they call the one-page financial plan. It's keeping it simple. And so you can get all the supporting documents and, and everything else electronically, but one page, let's figure out your goals. Where are the action items that we can address first? So we can make progress and, and, and keep it simple. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah. So, so how, I guess, what led to you making the transition? So you're sure. in the education, you yeah. know, which is kind of similar to financial planning, I guess. It's yeah. not like that really far. It kind of helps. No, it helps. Um, you know, I, I, I went and, and uh, did some more schooling. Um, and at the time, you know, kind of drew uh, an interest for finance. I had, um, I guess I would say it was a hobby. I, I, I did it out of kind of wanting to learn for myself. So I'm, um, I'm a lifelong uh, learner. I always kind of, I'm always trying to read the latest book or something on terms of the next thing. And so I, I learned for myself. And then quickly, friends and family had, were asking questions. I was helping them out. And at one point, um, a friend just said, why, why aren't you doing this? You're, you're good at it. You, you seem to light up when you do it, you, you know, in terms of a passion and so forth. So um, so I set out on a course to, to kind of make that transition. Yeah. Nice. So what, what kind of schooling did you do? So um, for um, for the financial planning or yeah. for, so um, for financial planning. So I took the there's a the CFP curriculum and education. And that is a co- combination yeah. of uh, six or seven courses. Yeah, CFP, exam. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I know what that is okay. as a lawyer. I don't know if the public knows what a CFP is, certified professional, but I think that's the designation that I look for. Yeah. And, you know, so like when my clients, my legal clients ask me, you know, how do I find a financial advisor? Look for the CFP. Yeah. I, I give a lot of respect to that. Cause yeah. I know it's, it's like similar to a bar exam, I would say, or like a CPA. In it's that a tough world. exam. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, and just for full clarification, I actually don't have all, cause because I'm a career changer, I don't have all the full hours. So I'm technically not a CFP as of today, Okay, but, but I've done all of the training. requirements. I've done the education piece. I've taken the exam. 
uh, there's an ethics piece and, and now it's now what they call the experience piece. And so okay. it's, it's getting that 6,000 hours. So cool. Yeah. Cool. So, you, yeah. but you, uh, so at one point in my life, uh -huh. I had a goal. I, I wanted to be a, a, C, a CFP as okay. well yeah. as an attorney because there's so much crossover. There are. In, there's, in, we in go the a lot into us. There's a whole, whole, one whole course of the seven is just estate planning only and strategies around it. Yeah. So I don't get nearly as detailed as you, but they, you know, they, there's a lot of crossover. We work together a lot. Yeah. I've had a lot of um, financial advisors as clients. Okay, sure. And you know, a lot of CPAs, and I love like nerding out with those type of uh -huh. people. Yeah, because you know, that's where I'll, I'll go into. Um, you know, if they want to talk a little bit more about. Um, that's where some of the strategy can get into as you're working with clients, and you know, as the laws change, as gift taxes change, or or or, or whatever, or you're just trying to protect assets. It's always changing. People's lives change, and so there's a lot of strategy opportunities there to work together. Yeah. yeah, so it, it's important to have a, a team. Mm -hmm. So I like working with with financial advisors, and um, uh, we can chat about this now. So something that I see developing in the in the industry mm -hmm. is how financial advisors are are offering legal services. Yeah, yeah, know? yeah. Um, this is a trend I, I've seen happen for for a while. I feel like you know everyone is doing everything, and now it's I feel like now in the financial world. You know, I, I heard I, I'm hearing in the news that Wells Fargo is selling their trust department, okay, yeah, and also selling their uh, credit card department. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. So you can see, you know, companies mm -hmm. are starting to you know get out of things. But best, um, yeah. but I yeah, as an attorney, I saw a lot of I'll call it I don't know what you want to call it encroachment was the first thing I thought of. I don't know if that's <laughs> the right word, but where the financial was trying to taking over the legal space. Okay. You mm -hmm. know, doing mm -hmm. things. Um, um, like the trust administration is one of the major areas I saw sure, sure. Yeah. where they say, you don't need an attorney, let us handle everything because yeah. they're concerned about keeping assets under management. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that pressure is real, right? It the, is real. It is, know, the, a, it is a conflict that's there. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so you said you're going back to your structure is you're mostly fee based where you do some where it's not all focused on assets under management, yeah. but and um, it's not. And I think there's, you know, there's opportunities even to have a different trustee and, and, you know, prove your worth. If you want to help manage, there's a lot of opportunities for, or there's a lot of trusts that need asset help and uh, you can help with those. But I think working with an expert to really take, take on that legal aspect of a trustee, I think a lot of people don't realize how, how much uh, burden can be in a trustee, right? And, and yeah. uh, families who may not like you as a trustee. And yeah, so, so, forth. Yeah. so that's what I see as, I, I used encroachment, yeah. meaning as, um, you know, financial institutions, we're mm -hmm. doing more of that. Yep. Um, the negative is they weren't utilizing the full value of the legal plans. I see. Yeah. Yeah. So, so for example, I, I saw situations where the legal plan we designed went in what we call a dynasty trust. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where it's protected from um, a, a possible spouse that they divorce mm -hmm. um, or you know any type of creditor, really. Mm -hmm. And people think like, oh, I don't need creditors. I pay my bills. I'm a, I'm a good person. I'm a good, I'm a good person. I don't mm -hmm. need asset protection, but one car accident. Yeah. And yeah. I say a bad word and then go, man, I, you know, am I protected? Yeah. You know, yeah. am I a target for a lawsuit? But what I've seen happen is where the legal plan was going to go into a protected trust. And then, um, you know, the bank has it go directly to a joint account with the spouse. Yeah. That's not, not even in the trust. Mm -hmm. And you know, maybe it was just innocent, but maybe it was a good move <laughs> on that spouse. Sure, um, sure. You I, know, protecting herself is what I guess you could call it. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the besides a liability reasons. Uh, you know, a second marriage or other type of spousal protection is 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 very important. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. not just to her. Yeah. Um, you know, a spouse is the most likely creditor. Sure. You know, if you okay. just kind of do the do the numbers right. Mm -hmm. Um. Probably, that's probably number one and the number two would be like a or kind of unlikely thing is like a car accident i think yeah yeah and people don't have the the, the right um other liability coverage to, to to protect themselves yeah 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 so um um okay so anyways um yeah so you know people in the different industry so mm -hmm. so one of the things um and, you know we can chat more about this later but i through Ma legal i'm working on programs for financial advisors where Mott Legal becomes, um, or how did you put? You, you said in the industry, people are bringing in um, contract attorneys, yeah. or you know these new law changes in Arizona that allow attorneys to, to, to 
to share fees. Yeah, yeah. I think there's that. There's the the law change of having um, non attorneys own law firms. So yeah, kind of both of those. Uh, I think the the big thing, the benefit to a client is just having that kind of cohesive experience, right? And so um, in the olden days, a financial advisor or an estate attorney would kind of say, hey, go talk to Rylas, go talk to Dan. And uh, oftentimes they get busy and they never kind of follow up. And oftentimes I, I'm talking to people, did you get your estate plan done yet? No. And so I think taking it through having a more cohesive partnership, working together tightly, having the visibility to see what's done um, just provides a better experience for the client. You can kind of help hold their hand because a lot of times it's a lot of times as a financial advisor, I end up being an accountability partner to them. And that's that's what we can help with. Yeah. Yeah. So um, so I see good opportunities mm -hmm. there, you know, as um, you know, as Mott Legal works with financial advisors. Absolutely. Um, you know, basically, this is something that's been happening for a while as well. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, the big advisors have been doing this. You know, maybe they bring in an attorney. Uh, or maybe they use a service like um, there's, there's Hyatt Legal. It's mm -hmm. actually a MetLife. They're branding it more now. Okay. It's always right. been owned by MetLife. But that's an insurance product, basically. Okay. Where a lot of employers provide it as a benefit. Oh, yeah. I'm familiar. Yeah. And then their, their, um, their employees can go, um, like, we're a provider for it. Okay. I, I probably have to be careful how much I say. Um, um, I can say we're a provider. But we, we – um, so when people have the coverage, mm -hmm. you know, it's just like insurance. Yeah, they go use it, and then you're reimbursed it, it, that way. Yeah, yeah. It provides a certain amount. Mm -hmm. And I've seen recently, you know, I, I've been approached by a different financial advisor where uh, they're offering MetLife for their clients. Interesting. Yeah. You know, yeah. So the way that they're providing um, legal services mm -hmm. is through like an insurance policy. Interesting. Okay. And in and, and the same note, I, you could see financial advisors that are potentially wrap, wrapping in the entire experience to a client um, and making sure they get their. So it's already started with taxes. So a lot of financial advisors either outsource or help start doing taxes on behalf of their client because they have all their financial information already. It yeah. can easily happen with with an estate attorney, you know, when I in terms of you know having that seamless again back to that seamless yeah. experience for the client same type of thing as an insurance policy yeah, yeah. well you have to be careful of us mm -hmm. like with some financial advisors yeah is where i see a lot of them they use estate planning yeah as uh, they use it as a loss leader you know they're not oh, trying to make money sure, sure they just want to get people in the door yeah. they, they just want to get people in the door mm -hmm. and see what assets they have and therefore it leads to sometimes not great planning yeah but yeah. they're Sometimes they're what I call order taker attorneys. Okay. Yeah. Sure, I see what you we'll, mean. Sure. We'll name your 25 grandkids <laughs> and give them all 1%. I yeah. don't see any be done problem yeah. about that. <laughs> you don't think about, they don't have any experience mm -hmm. administering a trust. Sure. Sure. The, and knowing like all the problems that they're creating because they're just order they're, takers. They're doing it at the beginning and they don't, uh, they don't have the ramifications of dealing with the, the aftermath. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So there's, um, I think that's what's given the estate planning maybe a bad name in the financial world. Mm -hmm. w would you agree? There's some. Are you, I think are you so. familiar with that stigma? Or yeah, those, yeah. I mean, a little bit. Operations? Yeah, I think it's you know I think we all all the, our industries have bad stigmas in a different way. You know whether it's the financial advisor that maybe does the commission and just moves on or or something, and and it's probably similar with the you know someone just going to. Uh, a legal zoom or something like that, which has its purpose in place. But I think, and, and just assuming they're going to get everything that they, they really should and get that advice. Cause they don't, you know? Yeah. yeah. So that's what, um, I'd say, be, you know, be careful. Like, uh, you know, when, um, when estate planning or when uh, financial advisors are offering the okay. trust packages, sure. but that's what I, I want to distinguish with Mott legal mm -hmm. is this clarify, you know, that our attorneys have a certain level of training. Got it. I, th I think, and, that, you know, the financial advisors you work with, make sure they're just positioned that way. And it's not a loss leader like you talked about, you know, and they're doing the financial planning first. Because a lot of times um, I feel that the state plan may not be able to really be done well until you kind of get the financial picture in place. You know, a lot of people come to me when they have accounts in 20 different spots. And so a lot of it's cleaning that up, figuring out what they have first and then working with you would, uh, here's a list of what they have. Let's make it easy and funding it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Funding is a big yeah. part of it. So I feel like that's a part of our Mott legal process that separates us. Uh -huh. You know, I tell people we're the best, yeah. but, 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 <laughs> but, but part of the reasons we actually are mm -hmm. is we, we provide the space for that funding. 
you know, where, um, and we actually invite the financial advisor to that meeting. We encourage them. That's great. You know, to have their financial advisor join. And now that we're doing more things, you know, being via zoom, it makes it easier. It makes it easier. They can pop in. And yeah, I've been on calls with an estate attorney or a client and clients sometimes forget about accounts or different types of things. And so they're either during the funding process or even during the discovery process. I, I think that the financial provider uh, advisor can provide a lot of value to the state attorney. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I like having them mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. So I can be like, you know, there's not always clear answers. No. Yeah. You know, it's like, who do we name as the beneficiary of our IRA? Yeah. Yeah. That's, it depends right on so many factors. So many factors. Yeah. How are, how are my existing accounts even titled, you know, and, and I know you're, you're licensed here in, in California from um, financial advisors aren't, I don't have the the state restriction. So I, I work with clients in, in all countries. And so I start dealing with community property versus non-community property. And and there's a lot of nuances as I even just titling a simple brokerage account. And you know, some states have have uh, tenants in common, some states have joint tenants right or survivorship, all these different types of ways to think about. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it's great when there's an attorney. Yeah, absolutely. You can be like, you know, here's here's what I want to do, you know, for these reasons, let's make sure you know, how, do, how, do, how, how do you want it yeah, you know, as far as the their... legal plan? Yep. So in our funding meeting, as part of the Mott legal process, we have um, like a worksheet mm-hmm. which, where it goes through the assets and it gives them the homework is what I call it, like how it should be set up. Okay. The, the funding recommendations. And then we clarify who's doing what, you know, if the attorney, mm-hmm. so we usually do deeds for real estate. Okay but the client does everything else, right? They have to change their beneficiaries on the IRA. Mm-hmm. It's up to them to go, you know, to change their investment accounts to be owned by the trust yeah. and, and things like that. So now do you go as far as, as minor assets like, uh, like, like cars and so forth? Do you typically recommend Antique those? waffle makers, yeah. uh, <laughs> the toaster oven, that's good. German <laughs> beer signs, toaster <laughs> yeah. ovens. I've seen on personal property uh, lists. Yeah. Um, if it's important to someone sure. like who, like I'm, People, I care about a lot of weird stuff. That's it's all right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, we 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 do get down to that level. But here's how I do it. So you know, a lot of things don't have to be in the trust. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the last will and testament handles personal property, and in the last will and testament, we say like you'll know, give everything to a list which is or may be prepared by me. Okay. Okay. And then whatever is not on the list, then give it to my spouse or to my kids. So we, we add in that list somewhere that makes sense to give them the option to update that regularly, you know, without having to pay an attorney. Sure. Sure. They can just kind of put it in the back of the book and handwrite it in or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So, and then depending on what it is, um, the other, my other move or, or mm-hmm. trick I like to do, it's not really my, my style of planning, I guess you would say is our, our trust. I, I like to keep it, keep it simple. Mm-hmm. You know, the ascertainable standard, you know, yeah, health, yeah. education, maintenance and support. Yep. Yeah. You know, where we're following that regular standard. And then I say, give unofficial instructions to the trustee. You know, especially if it's your you know, your brother or even if it's, you know, Mott Legal, we serve in that. Uh, we'll, we'll serve as a successor trustee for people. Okay. A, yeah. As that fiduciary. Sure. So I'm like, you know, if I have those instructions, that gives me some guidance what I can do. I like them to be unofficial because we don't want it to go into court. Okay. You know, if the yeah. trust says, you know, that they can backpack Europe when they're 18 and, <laughs> and do all of this and that, mm-hmm. um, you it's know, too the, specific, yeah. too specific. Yeah. And depending on, you know, the amount of the assets or whatever it is, uh, the beneficiary could sue the trustee and say, you know, why didn't I get this? Yeah. Versus if that's in the unofficial instructions, you know, there's plenty of assets there. Yeah, yeah. And the, the trustee can be like, all right, that's support and maintenance. Yep, yep. And then they have, you know, also, I'm always thinking of like, all right, worst case scenario, the trustee gets sued if they do this, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, they have, you know, guidance from uh, the trust store, the trust creator you know, of, of their instructions. And then as long as they can fit that in, the the ascertainable standard, you know, support, maintenance, those Health, things. Health, education, yeah, 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 yeah. Then they're good. The backpacking trip to Europe to, to educate, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right, yeah, that's, yeah. that's education. Yeah, people, yeah, yeah. you know, gain value out mm-hmm. of that. Mm-hmm. So I've had people use that where they're like, sometimes they're like, I want to make sure my kid doesn't have, spend too much on a car or whatever it is. Yeah. Or, but I don't like forcing them to trust saying they can never have, you know, more than, you know, Honda Civic value or whatever it is, or, mm-hmm. 
you know, because it could just create problems later. So how do you, uh, as a trustee or a successor trustee, find, um, you know, trusted financial people too? Because a lot of times they're big assets. Uh, you know, some of these trusts can be pretty big assets. And so trying to figure out how to how to manage those too is, is, is where yeah. the, the other the other direction comes, I think, in terms of help trusting somebody. Yeah, 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 good point. So um, I think a lot of people that come to me, mm -hmm. they, they already have a financial advisor. Yeah. Or maybe I would yeah. say they identify as having a sure. financial advisor. Sure. You yeah. know, maybe there's, that may be someone at the bank, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, who helped them set up a, a CD. Yeah. But they view that as their financial advisor. Yeah. Or their parents set it up and it's been handed down because that person is no longer at the firm because they've retired or something too. Yeah, that happens a lot. Yeah. It's just in limbo. Identify with the uh -huh. financial advisor. <laughs> yes. They think they have one. I think it's probably some of the categories. You, know, you say you, you say that the identifying fees, that's that's important because there's tons of attorneys, there's tons of financial advisors uh, that are out there, and it's important that you kind of mix well. And I think personality both ways makes it is very important in the in the relationship for sure. yeah. yeah so um identifying when when it comes to um their financial plan specifically mm -hmm. sometimes in the first meeting mm -hmm. you know as i'm looking at the assets and um you know designing an estate plan for them mm -hmm. you know i am you know i'm trying to get their uh their goals you yeah. know figure out you know what you know what they want to do and figure out um how much money ultimately they need from the trust on a regular basis yeah 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 things like that so usually my clients are the ones that create the trust themselves so they have full control over mm -hmm. everything okay and so we're we're designing how we pass that i got it yep yeah and uh, when it's in a dynasty yeah mm -hmm. yeah but um you, when it comes to the funding meeting you know that's when it's more like yeah do you have a financial advisor sure. you know because I, I tell them you know big picture i want all these things in the trust yeah you yeah. know, but the underlying investments, you know, that's, that's not my, no, um, that's, yeah. I, I don't know. People will, will ask me questions sometimes like, yeah, is this a good way? Or is that <laughs> sure. you know, where I should be? Or, and but there's like, a line and, and, you know, and there's, yeah, there's regulation too. You got to be careful. I'm sure with from liability, especially with investments. Yeah. I tell people like, I know enough where I'm dangerous, mm -hmm. you know, it's not my, <laughs> it's not my area of, yeah. of expertise. So when I represent trustees, Mm -hmm. That's a big part of our business. We help people administer a trust. Um, I recommend, I usually recommend that they hire a financial advisor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, sometimes we're, we're liquidating assets. You know, most of the time we're, we're liquidating. So then it's not as important. Wrapping of, it up, uh, wrapping you know, it up. Basis yeah. and those mm -hmm. types mm -hmm. of things. But in trusts where they're ongoing, mm -hmm. you know, where they're managing assets for uh, beneficiaries, like until they turn 35 sure, and yeah. they're in their twenties. You got 15 I, years. Yeah. I, I don't know how to manage that. Yeah. And, and my legal advice is hire someone Yeah, because yeah. you have the liability Absolutely. as a trustee. Mm -hmm. So you better, yeah, you better have something where if you get sued, you can say point back to another, this, this is where I got the advice. Makes, this is why I did that. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. So, um, all right. So, the other thing I want to get into mm -hmm. that we talked about in our little pre-conversation before sure. we went live is cryptocurrency. Yeah. Should yeah, we talk it's crypto? It, I was excited to hear that you're not afraid of that topic. Yeah, I'm not afraid of it. I um I'm still getting my head around it. It's new for a lot of people. Um in fact I attended a, a conference at the beginning of this week where it was put on by uh several financial advisors, some people in the crypto space, and, and they're really trying to figure out um you know, what's coming to market in terms of it's being, you know, SEC regulations and so forth. It's still. So how, how do the advisors receive it? Uh, you know, I think it depends on the type of advisor. I think the message at this conference was if you don't get your head around it, um, you're going to start seeing clients who, who want it and you'll yeah. be left, you'll be left standing flat footed, yeah. you know? And yeah. I, I love going to, um, like in the legal space, mm -hmm. some of these topics, you know, I've been to, um, CLEs continuing legal sure. education sure. Yeah. about this. And, um, it seems like some of like the older generation is like, this is, hor this is the dumbest <laughs> thing ever. Like, why, why would you do this? There was an attorney, and... there was an attorney that had a session was talking about it, you know, and trying to figure out how you deal with, if, if it's, you know, if, if, especially if it's, um, I forget the term they use, just cold storage, uh, you know, and you have keys and so forth. How do you keep those uh, from from like a, an estate planning standpoint? It's an interesting topic. Yeah. Yeah. So let's let's back up a little bit. Okay. On the, um, yeah. So blockchain, crypto. So what I, I barely understand it. Mm -hmm. Let's look at these these comments. Let's see. First time viewer, oh. attorney here. Oh, let's, let's see. Attorney here in Phoenix that is in the REI world. World real estate investment. Excited to see what you guys have going. Oh, thanks, thanks, Casey. Thanks for joining in. 
Uh, I'm going to go live later today, Casey, on um, the Mott Legal page, but I'm going to be talking specifically for the REI people, real estate investors, on how to work with probate attorneys. So I, I have some tools there um, that I uh, developed for Pace, my friend Pace Morby. I did his, uh, I spoke at a mastermind he did, so we can touch on that. Uh, I know, Connor too, thanks, thanks guys for the support. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, crypto. So what is it? I, I barely understand it. Yeah. So um, I, the, the blockchain is what powers it, right? Sure, yeah, I think there's a tech, and, and, and you guys, there may be some more experts out there, but you know, it's, there's, there's this technology layer, but then there's also the different coins or, or value of cur currency, which is, top. which is, those are kind of like stocks is what I would say. They can be, yeah, 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 yeah. So the blockchain, so the way I, I understand that, mm -hmm. it basically allows computers to talk to each other. Yeah. Is that, is that a fair yeah. way to say it? It kind does, of like and, and it's, de well, there's different types of coins, but a lot of them are decentralized. So sometimes it's thousands or tens of thousands of computers that are storing everybody's value. Yes, yeah, so that, that's a big part of it, mm -hmm. decentralized. Mm -hmm. So that's like the ledger is what they call that, yeah. right? So yeah. they have like a, a public place. Yes. You know, so when computers want to talk to each other, mm -hmm. it's a way that they can authenticate. Yep, and true that it truly is uh, a real coin. Yeah, yeah or, so or, the way it works, I understand it. So, like, if we want to do a transaction on the blockchain, you know, we, we don't know each other mm -hmm. at all. Um, I put in my key, basically, like, my set of numbers. Yeah. And I think the blockchain, it gives, like, a math problem or something, right? Yeah, it's math-driven. Yeah, yeah. So, it's like, all right, if you're authentic, then, you know, solve this problem to match it. And so, I, I have one block in the blockchain, and then you have another one. Right, and yeah. then and then it stays in the public ledger. Yeah, yeah, for, so, forever. Yeah, so that it stays, uh, it's encrypted, so they mm -hmm. can't see who mm -hmm. these people are theoretically. Right, the right. government I think figured so. out ways Maybe, to do it. Maybe I'm sure. Yeah. Um. So if you if you use like Coinbase or something like that, your wallet, I think that appears in there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, that makes sense. And then and then um, they can you know, the, the, the government can access all your financial records, right? Is that true or false? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I it's, know that it's true. Yeah. Okay. It's not, yeah. There's no privacy. Yeah. Right. In bank accounts. Right. Yeah. No, definitely not on, on bank accounts. So Coinbase would probably fall into that. That I know Coinbase, there's a whole tax issue. We don't, Want to necessarily go down that path, but Coinbase people is don't kind really of stuck know in it. Kind yeah. of the taxes. Yeah. People are like, huh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. The, the, the taxes part of it de depends on if you um, if you bring it out of cryptocurrency, like into dollars. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And then if you put it back, the IRS back has in, rules that technically it's a, it's 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 taxed every time you buy and sell, and even tra trade. Um, it's just very difficult to report all that, especially with the combination going on. But I think the IRS regulations, and I'm not a CPA, do say that it, it's taxed. Yeah. yeah, I think they treat it kind of like personal property. Yeah, yeah. you know, like if you buy a Bitcoin for a dollar, yeah, and then um, you sell it for ten dollars, it's capital gains. But, or, yeah, yeah, capital yeah. gain. Yeah, yeah. I, uh -huh. I, I, I think that's how it goes. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Um, okay, so that so the blockchain, blockchain is the future. I feel like. Sure. Whether it's whether it's I think currency or not. I mean, some people talk about real estate transactions. You know, Casey said he's yeah. an attorney in real estate, and and perhaps uh, you know whether it's you know transactions. Yeah. And, yeah. I see estate planning mm -hmm. being yeah. done in the blockchain in yeah. the future. That would be interesting. That you would, know, upon my death, mm -hmm. that's a condition that can be proved. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. transfer these accounts. That'd be fantastic. You know, to these three people. Because how often are people have their um, estate plan done and then someone passes away and then you got to find it, you know, or either find the attorney yeah. who did it if it's digital or find the, the paper copy. And if it's in the blockchain or some type of technology, it's just there. Yeah. And then contracts. So I, I've, um, one of the ways I've learned about cryptocurrency mm -hmm. is in the music industry. Okay. So I, I watched a YouTube, uh, you know, this weekend mm -hmm. about this artist, RAC. Okay. Uh, Grammy award winning and like, mm -hmm. um, you know, a big artist, but he's used cryptocurrency for, um, he sold a mixtape to his fans. Re re okay. So, and it's all through crypto. All, all through oh, wow. crypto, wow. but it's a way to let, let the market set the value, mm -hmm. you know, what, you know, what to sell it at. And, um, I think they ended up going like up to like 3000 bucks. Wow. But, but some of that was the cryptocurrency speculators. Sure. Okay. You know, where right. they're, that's why I say it's kind of like the stock aspect of it. You know, there's people that see uh, cryptocurrencies release 
and if they see the value going up, you know, they'll it's buy like low, snowball, sell high. It's a snowball effect, yeah. 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 Um, but he's also using it, so he's going to give it to his fans. So mm-hmm. he issued a coin, and uh, like another coin. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the way these currencies work, I think like the basic idea is they limit the number of coins, right? Mm-hmm. So, so they say this this exists scarcity, now. Scarcity, scarcity, yeah. And then, you know, it's based on scarcity. There's only so many of them. And then they let basically let the market decide the value, right? Right. You know, if people want them, it's um, the market decides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's no there's no governmental agency or something that is able to you know pull their levers to help adjust that you know through monetary policy or, or something like that. Yeah. 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 I think that's why the governments hate it so much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was telling you before we started, you know, my experience with banks were that that I do business at. They mm-hmm. won't allow me to accept cryptocurrency. Yeah. At least that's that's in the last like, you know, kind of five or six months. I don't I don't push it a lot with my <laughs> bank. I just kinda of like, cool, I just want to, you know, bank with you yeah. guys. And- it's interesting that the big the big custodians that we work with, uh, like Fidelity, T D Ameritrade, Schwab, um, they all have like a head of of digital currency or digital whatever they call their head trying to figure it out too. Cause it's you know, people are gonna want it. And so, you know, once you can potentially buy like an ETF or some type of simple transaction, it's going to really open up the, the availability for people to store it on their Schwab account, for example, and and not have to go through all the wallets and so forth, which may have its own reason to do, but it allows yeah. people to kind of dip their toe in. And that's really going to open up the floodgate. Yeah. yeah. It's good to hear that they're they're thinking about it yep. and they're yeah. looking at it. They they're are. not taking an, uh, an approach of- No, they're active. Just, just they know if they do don't, they're going to be, they're going to be caught and in, in, you know, yeah. losing. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Um, it, it's hard to figure out how to work it, right? Yeah. Where do you, where do you keep your password? Yeah, you know, because yeah. there's there's a lot of people. You know, the the bad part about decentralized is if you lose your password, there's no one there to reset it for you. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people share the story there and in the early days of Bitcoin, and they didn't think anything of it. They they've lost that hard drive or password now. Back when it was worth pennies, that's it, and and it would be worth a lot of money now. But they've kind of disregarded it yeah you hear that story a lot mm-hmm. and people think like man how how can you do that yeah yeah um i was talking to one of my friends recently people need to remember the napster days right yeah. this is going back to music yeah. like people yeah. you know so one of my friends he was downloading a bunch of music uh which as people yeah. did, no, in, did. Uh, yeah you yeah. know the early 90s sure you know when that was first yeah available and this, this is all this is all before iTunes and everything else, everybody, you know, yeah. it was the only way to, yeah. Then you had Metallica be able to, like, <laughs> come along, yeah. you know, big lawsuits, yeah. Yeah. and the music industry was going after some people. Do you remember hearing about that, though? Like, yeah. people getting busted? Yeah, like, they're, they're trying to do it, yeah. And, you know, making and, an example out of people, but, um, you know, he, he probably wasn't at that level, but but he just deleted his hard drive. Okay, yeah. You yeah. know, that, you know, because he had a bunch of music on it. With crypto. Uh, yeah, he also had these weird Bitcoin things, you know, that he that he bought too. Wow. And you know, you know, yeah, later, you know, as you know, Bitcoin's more of a thing. It's like, yeah, where are those? It's like, oh crap, they're hope you have a backup. They got deleted yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with all that other stuff. But oh. um, yeah, it's super interesting space, and and I I think that um, you know I've heard some people say, uh, you know, even even putting in 1% of your kind of overall assets, one to 5%, you know, may make sense. It may be the replacement to gold or something like that. Um, I've heard it, like some financial people say like some sort of a hedge. Yeah, I think so. It just, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely speculative and kind of my, my mind, but it's uh, doesn't hurt to, at least you got to keep an eye on what's happening. You yeah. know, I'm not saying to invest in it today, no investment advice on, on this show, but yeah. yeah, yeah. I've invested in some crypto kitties Okay. Yeah, I would. I would suggest you guys invest in Crypto Kitties. <laughs> it's like a digital Beanie Baby. <laughs> but so I went to a CLE okay. on this topic, mm-hmm. and um, you know, I'm, I'm just fascinated with the blockchain. Sure. sure. So Crypto Kitties, it's like the first uh, video game type thing, but you have these little um, like digital Beanie Babies. There's a little description of these huh. like mythical characters really yeah and they're like two or three dollars and they're on the chain on and the um i bought them with ethereum okay. like cryptocurrency mm-hmm. and i had to get like a plug-in you had to use google chrome it's been a while since i've done it because you have to you have to have a desktop okay all right um, interesting i gotta look that one up but you can buy these crypto kitties from people and you can also breed them 
<laughs> they're gonna be you know like the beanie babies of the 90s yeah 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 yeah, yeah so um I, I was trying to show my, my kids to get them you know interested in the blockchain mm -hmm. i'm like you guys could be crypto kitty rich you know like forget the winklevoss twins the yeah. first uh yeah, the facebook bitcoin yeah, billionaires yeah, yeah, you could yeah, be the yeah. crypto uh, crypto kitty mm -hmm. um but yeah it's just a way to learn the blockchain sure, sure. is um and it's evolving fast too. I think a lot of it just scares people because they don't understand it, which I don't that yeah. much, you know. So it's just scratching the surface. So. Yeah, I, I don't fully understand it either. Yeah, it's yeah. like you know, I um every time I uh, watch a podcast or something, I pick up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Um, I also met a lot of people in um in uh, like San Diego. Like um, there's a lot of like startups there, and a sure. lot of like tech people. They they kind of relate more. Yeah, and I've um you know, learn about it that way. Just, and, you know, what, um, I've, I've met some people that were making a lot of money in it. Sure. Just like the speculation thing where yeah. they just, um, um, I don't know. It's kind of a interesting world. There could be like fraud and stuff like that in that space. You got to be careful with, especially you know, some of those newer coins, you know, there's a lot of those initial coin offerings, which are kind of like a brand new company coming to, to the market. They have these new coins and you're right. There were, there were some frauds at the beginning. Yeah. Kind of like the pump and dump strategy, yeah, yeah. you know, where they can use their yeah, factors yeah, to of. pump up the value and then they, um, you know, the insiders get yeah, out. Yeah. Yeah. So for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's great to hear. You're, um, you're not afraid of that. And you know, looking towards it, I, I see big opportunities. So I see estate planning all being done in the blockchain mm -hmm. and you know, I talk about asset protection sometimes as something that we're really not supposed to talk about. You know, you do everything as tax planning. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. But real asset crypto is real asset protection strategies, you know, where you're going to have things, I, I view it as off the board. You know, because yeah. any type of bank accounts, they can be seized. Yeah, They can right, be garnished. Right. Mm -hmm. But with, with crypto, um, I don't think they can be garnished. Although I think the U.S. government has some. I think they seized some from... Um, or is that the Silk Road creator? Okay, yeah, yeah, that that could be. Yeah, they could get some, and and then there's some there's some coins that are becoming much more centralized, which is interesting too, and um, that provides, I guess, some benefits in terms of like speed of transaction. You know, Bitcoin. I don't know the timing; it's minutes or or something for a transaction. To, in in some of these more centralized ones, are more like a Visa Mastercard. Yeah, it. there's like, like a faster blockchain, yeah, isn't yeah. there? And so, but the the drawback is it becomes more centralized, and and it's not as anonymous, but it's the technology still that is out there, which is interesting too. Yeah. yeah so, uh, so I've I've done transactions, mm -hmm. Crypto Kitties. <laughs> Hey, through, through the blockchain hey, we're going to look back in 20 years and and uh, those are going to be great but um uh, but it, it taught me that you have to pay gas oh yeah right okay so if you exchange you know so if we want to do a transaction like if you have some awesome crypto kitty that i want to buy uh-huh uh we got to pay some gas to that transaction you know for all the servers all the yeah. computers sure that's what the gas is that's yeah. what goes to the farmers yeah yeah and and it helps cover the cost of the infrastructure no different than a Visa or MasterCard taking a couple percent off the top, you know, it's kind of what it is. Very similar. That's, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah it's yeah. just um, with the blockchain, you you see it right yeah, there. Yeah, it's very transparent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah it's interesting. Yeah, cool, good good stuff. Um, all right, well, thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, do we want to touch on any other topics before we wrap it up today? No, I just you know, this is great. We had some good questions, and and um, I'll, I'll get your stuff back. It on was there. it was it was it was a blast catching up for sure yeah it was fun so um we'll, we'll keep in touch let us know if you guys like this video hit a hit a thumbs up uh if you want to see more of these types of things and uh, we can continue um you know i, I feel like you know your, your education space mm -hmm. you know yeah. same thing we sure. can um continue to to chat about the market and you know what the opportunities are out there for people That's and fun. then um you know, the way I use this show is mm -hmm. I'm building my, you know, showing people my network of yeah. financial advisors, yeah. you know, because people, um, you know, I guess, tell us about your ideal client. What, what type of people do you like working with? And um... yeah, no, I think, I think the first and foremost, it comes down to uh, someone that, you know, I connect with. We talked about ideal fit earlier. That's important. So um, they need to feel they can trust me. I feel like that they're, you know, a person that I can work with. I tend to, so I have people in all age groups um, in their 20s all the way up to their actually early 90s. And um, is, is in, in so uh, from a client perspective, I work with people all over 
uh, the country as well. I think with COVID, it's it's um, I have clients I've never met face to face, and um, this is even before COVID. So nowadays, it's someone. It's finding the right fit in an advisor. It doesn't have to be someone with a mahogany desk down the street. And they, you know? and they don't have to be physically yeah, located. They don't have to be Scottsdale. physically located. No, no, not at all. I mean, people, um, I think, are more comfortable. I find some people feel like they can maybe open up more even on video. It's just kind of more of it can kind of be a pretty, you know, you're it's just the two two or three, four of you, whoever's on on the call. Yeah, they're having more comfortable a pretty, in their house. Yeah. And then they can control who they want there. Yes, you know, They can have... Um, you know, here's my son or whoever yeah, they bring want. In a, bring in a, a, a kid if they want or a parent or something like that. So uh, that didn't answer your question, I know, about who the yeah. ideal client is. But I guess I wanted to point out that it's it, the client can be anywhere. It, it, we broke down the physical barriers. My clients are pretty broad, too. Yeah, yeah. You know, where it's, so it's um, so so age range. You, know, age, you like people in the different phases, too. So you're I not do. just um, focused on people that are just yeah. at retirement or no i haven't you know i i don't have like a strong niche which i know some people just focus on that so i tend to find um you know most most in common and and so forth you know 40s 50s and 60s there's a lot of opportunity to start planning you know people say okay I, you know i've i'm into my um, my career i'm running full speed now am i even on track to to retire at 60 am i can i pull the plug at 50, you know, can I retire early or it's not always retire. It's you kind of have more I, financial I freedom. That's, that's one of the most common questions mm -hmm. I think that I get from my, um, estate planning, legal clients. Sure. You know, that's one of the most so common what, needs that they have. Yeah. You know, you know, yeah. When can I retire? Yeah. How yeah. can I retire? And I think just dealing, um, I think kind of like with the mental of that. Yeah. Like I had a client, he, uh, he made really good income mm -hmm. and he did a good job, you know, putting things away, but he was freaked out by the fact he wasn't going to get it going to get another paycheck. Yeah. Yeah. So it's He's like, uh, how do you do yeah, that? So, well, I think the financial planning, a lot of people think of it as very analytical. There's a soft side in a conversation you have with people too. It's like, what's going to happen that day that paycheck comes off. So it's not just, how are you going to replicate that paycheck through, um, you know, income sources, through your portfolio, through social security. It's what am I going to do with my time, mm -hmm. you know, and having yeah. those conversations on kind of the, the, the softer side of, of planning. And so a lot of people start revolving into like part-time work, or are you going to volunteer and having those conversations and how that fits into your finances, I think is a big port part too. Yeah. Yeah. Like the practical side, right? Yeah. Making yeah. sure, you know, what people are doing is mm -hmm. actually going to, going to stick. Yeah. And, and I think, I think the other thing too, I have some clients that, you know, that are about 40 or about 50 and they want to transition. It's not retiring, but they want to completely career change similar to what I did. But now it's, now it's like, can I, can yeah, I, so you're probably, you know, what a great resource, like mm -hmm. anyone looking for a career change, you yeah. know, so like you probably have a lot of people that have that um, same perspective, right. Or yeah. considering a career change. That's exactly right. It's like, how does that affect, how will this affect my, my, my picture? Can I still um, meet my goals. Cause at the end of the day, it's like, what are your goals and let's, let's make them work. And so it's kind of figuring out how that works. So that's, that's a, it's a good, good opportunity. Great. Mm -hmm. So, so it sounds like your ideal client mm -hmm. is, um, so age doesn't really matter. Nope. Location doesn't really matter. Right. Um, it's just gonna <laughs> like you and trust yeah. you. <laughs> um, no, I think, you know, I and, think it's, oh, go ahead. I'll say, I'll, I'll back you up. Mm -hmm. You know, we've worked on, I, I like your style, which is why you're here today. Yeah. I think we've had uh, common clients already. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Have, um, yeah know, we've had, we've had some, uh, even you, you jumped, uh, when I had a weird situation, you know, with COVID and you can't get to a, a, a a client in the hospital and trying to figure those out. So we have, yeah, we've worked together. Yeah. But there's, there's so much value there where mm -hmm. it's like, um, you know, you have your different specialties. So, yeah. I, you know, I like, um, you know, to help my clients, I like to have a good, um, options for them. Yeah. It's option. Yeah. You know, Cause not every, it's not always just one person because they, they, that personality is very important. Yeah. 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 Well, great. Thanks, Dan. This was fun. Let's end it there. So you guys um, reach out to Dan if you, uh, if you need some help with the financial advisor. Uh, let's put my housekeeping stuff back on there. So I'll say uh, subscribe to the YouTube. So here's our Mott Legal YouTube, or this is MottLegal.com. So one way to find the YouTube, oops, I got to go on the right screen. If you scroll all the way down, boom, this YouTube button, it'll take you right over to our page and then, oh, here we are, we're live. And then you're gonna hit the subscribe. And then we got a lot of good videos that I've done here. So the past shows, you guys can go back, uh, see other people that have been on. And then there's you know just a lot of educational videos too, like how to administer a trust, 
what is the last will and testament, things like that. I've actually networked with a couple of your uh, previous guests. It's been really nice. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, oh great. That's, yeah. that's so good to hear. That's um, um, yeah, that's the goal that this is uh, valuable to people that, um, that yeah they can they can meet people mm -hmm. you know and be connected to someone that can help in that specific industry yeah that makes a lot so, of sense yeah yeah so this is you know some of the people that have been on you know my, my friends and mm -hmm. just you know people that i've been lucky enough to be introduced to um you know through through others in my network absolutely yeah so, great all right thanks everyone we'll, we'll see you next week next week will be a regular live stream some sort of legal topic and then in two weeks i'll have another guest so take care